Hello everybody out there watching on YouTube and welcome to race number 21 of Season 3 NNSCRA Marvel Studios Cup Series. I'm Levi McIntyre, the voice of the NNSCRA Marvel Studios Cup Series, here to welcome you to the namesake race, the Marvel Studios 500 here at Armory Digital Super Speedway as we're getting set for 29 laps of racing here at this 2.6 mile restrictor play racetrack. But I'm not alone, I'm joined on commentary by the returning... Dylan Young. Of course, it is very, very, very good to be back here in the booth. And I'll tell you what, probably one of the, one of the most favorite super speedways in the more fictional side of the NR, Armory Digital, and I'm very, very happy to be here. Indeed, I think we all are. So uh, before we look at the starting lineup, we're going to take a look and see how the point standings look coming into the race today. So, after last week at, uh, I actually forget where we went to last week, I believe it was Road America, I want to say, and we have a new points leader, and that's David Rivera, he leads the points by 13 points over James Qualls, third is Dylan Jacobs, fourth Charles Sanford, fifth Dylan Young, sixth is Joshua Cooley, seventh Matt McIntyre, eighth Austin LaPlante, ninth Mark Lane, and then tenth Rafael LeDuc. So right now the two wildcard drivers currently would be Emmanuel Hartnett and Pichu London for being the highest outside the top 10, inside the top 30 in points with a win. But it's still very, very close between 8th uh, in points down to about 24th in points. It's separated by 49 points. So anything can happen. And also after this race, only 5 races left until the chase. Uh, but uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the starting lineup. Starting in the last row is Austin LaPlante and Rafael LaDuke. So I hope you guys are ready for a big raging comment from LaDuke if he ever comments again. Um, <laughs> but he, he should be soon, though. Who knows? All right, but anyways, uh, on the front row, we have a Tweenix Racing front row. Dylan Poteet on the pole. Starting next to him is James McLeod. Row 2 is Pichu London, Carson Gum. Row 3, Zachary Fitzwater, Seth Cole. Row 4, Jake Baskinger, Anthony McCrory. And then row 5, Chris Michaels and Dylan Young. With that said, let's get the command to fire engines here at Armourly Digital. Drivers, start your engines! As the cars begin to roll for their one pace lap around this uh, amazing looking racetrack. Yeah, this is one of the more unique tracks you will find here. It's kind of a, a mix of Talladega and another track that I cannot think of off the top of my head. But what's unique about this track is that if you notice right there, not only the pit road exit, but also if you see how the turns are, you get a bank and then you're also straight on the bank and then you take the bank of the turn again off of turn one and turn two and then turns three and four is just a regular super speedway bank turn. And then if you notice when we head to the start finish line very soon, you'll notice that when we go off of four, there'll be a little bit of a dip going on there and then the start finish line's like there. That's kind of what is similar about Talladega with this track right here. That's just how it is. Yeah, and it is also roughly the same uh, size, only Armory Digital is just a little bit smaller, but still it's very much like Talladega in the way it's shaped for the most part. Those are coming up to turn three right here. All these drivers, all 42 of them are getting ready to take the green. I'll tell you what, I don't know who is really going to be the favorite in this one because there are so many drivers that can win this race. Any one of them can win this race here, but... 
I really don't know, though. It's going to be hard to say because super speedways, they're very unpredictable here. Yeah, and the latest uh, Super Speedway winner, Dylan Jacobs, who won back at Daytona a few weeks ago, he is, uh, from what I saw in the starting lineup, he is starting in the back of the pack. But if you find, but if the friends are where you find them, you can get up to the front pretty easily here at this racetrack or any play track in general. But the pace car has entered pit road, and we're getting ready to come to the start finish line to get this race underway. And ladies and gentlemen, boogity boogity boogity, let's go racing. So far, a even start. If you notice, the 19 had a really good start in the outside line, but this is where that inside line is really going to kick in right now. So far, these drivers are doing a okay though, and Dylan Pozzi will take the advantage over James McLeod. Bringing along car number 21 and car number 18 to the front of the field. Looks like car number 21 is going to take the lead right there. Car number 18 trying to get that second position, but coming to the line, trying to complete the first lap. Three wide battle heading to the line. And it looks like Cardinal 21 is going to easily lead it no matter what. Now 56 coming on in on that inside line. Wow, what a shot with a move right there. Indeed, Andrew Rich in the 56 for Michael Waltrip Racing now up here at the front as they are four wide for quite a few rows back there. Almost five wide, I see. Let's go to helicopter view. They are five wide. Oh my god, I've never seen that before in Armory Digital and they're making it work. It's impressive right there. Yeah, as and long as they're not yeah. leaning, it's possible. Another to make five a wide. Another five wide. And I don't I don't know. That twenty four is in a very bad position right there. Yeah, five in the middle wide. of the set of uh, McCurry and There's Chris Michael. Five wide. There's two five wides going. There's oh six, six wide. wide! Holy cow! Six wide right I, I there. Don't, I don't know how they're making this work, but they're Coming into turn one, this is not going to end well, I can tell you that for a fact. And one some car cars ended up getting in the wall, and there oh, they go! And of course, I'm like, oh, here comes the big one! The big one has struck you in Armory Digital, and there is a big crash. Oh my gosh, one oh, car upside God. down, and that's Phil Parker in the 12 from Young Motorsports going upside down. LeDuc was involved, Dylan Young was in it, William Brock I was on the rear view camera of for a moment. Qualls was in it. Gardner Johnny was in Gardner. it, London, oh. Zorley, Face Punch. Some guys are getting stuck on that apron. Some guys are getting stuck on that apron, too. Poteed was in it, Chris there. Michaels. Sanford was involved. The points leader, David Rivera, was in it, too. So was yeah, Galligan. A lot of cars involved. Yeah, big number of drivers got involved in that one there. But Mark I'm amazed Lane how they went six wide, though. I am amazed. I have never seen that happen before off this track. And somehow they made five wide work, but I don't know how they thought, hey, let's go six wide. That was a great idea. Yeah, but uh, as that came out, Andrew Rich was still the race leader at that moment. But man, that was an interesting sequence. Five and six wide. They made it work for a while until we saw some leaning, in which we're going to find out here in just a second. As we're going to go ahead and take a look at the replay of what brought the caution out for the first time today here at Armory Digital Super Speedway. Well, here's a look at what happened. So, yeah, you can tell right there they were not giving each other a whole lot of room going six wide. And then it's going to be double contact here. And it looks like it's going to be, yeah, right there. The 79 of Joshua Sakuli comes up into the two of Dylan Young and collects Dylan Poteet, Dorian Face Puncher, Pichu London. And then we're going to take a look at the after wreck up ahead with the 24 among others but yeah it was like once the 62 to 31 and the 21 were all the way sideways oh. on the track the racetrack got blocked and, and everyone just, else behind them got involved Gardner. and there's Gardner who went upside down for a few yeah, we, rolls. we didn't even see that until now but that explains what happened with Gardner's situation but I'm amazed actually Johnny Gardner tried to drive away for a moment until he got stuck yeah and also the 31, or uh, I think that was the 31 right there too. Yeah, it was. Yeah, Poteet, who was the pole setter, he ended up being involved somehow. But yeah, I there's think, a yeah. lot of different looks that we're going to have to look yeah. at. 
And I just realized, too, because of the banking there, actually flipped them over. Because you can tell, that's a sharp bank heading on from down there to the apron. And, of course, if you get caught in that, that's a good opportunity of a flip it. There had to have been at least three wrecks in the one there. You can see from the first wreck taking place, and then the aftermath of the second wreck, and then the third wreck way up ahead. Let's look at the 24 of Matt McIntyre. You can kind of see they were going about four or five wide when this happened, and it looked like... Yeah, it was the oh yeah, the nineteen got sideways and got into the seventeen, into the twenty four, and then watch the seventeen of Chris Michaels. He's gonna go for a wild ride. Wow! And mess. I just realized how did James McLeod miss that one? That that almost got him in the back corner there. But everyone else did a great job, and I noticed a couple cars got away from that relatively unscathed, like Kyle Keith, and I think I seen like a couple other cars too, like the oh never mind, I seen the twenty get involved. Yeah, you know, Emmanuel Hartnett was in there, and I saw him get involved in the aftermath. And then Phil there's Parker, the trying to figure out how in the world did Phil Parker get involved. Yeah, because there's a third wreck, if, if, if you notice there. Because I noticed the 01 go around. <clears throat> see the 01 somewhere here, but... Yeah, right there in that Sierra Mist car. He's going yeah. sideways, and it's just sliding down the something, racetrack. Something happened to him. After that second wreck, and I don't know what happened to Brock, but I, I noticed someone clipped him. I think that was the 20... Oh, yeah, it was the 03 and all of it. Oh, no, he went up the track and clipped the 12. That explains that part. Yeah, so now trying to figure out how in the world did the 12 go upside down. But he got hit by four cars right there. And then it looks like... Oh, just a oh, little hey. contact from PJ Williams in the 89 sent him on his yeah. side. And he was right on that banking, like I mentioned earlier, too. And then all of a sudden, he flips. So that's a tough break right there. Yeah, and then <laughs> Rafael Leduc, who was dead last in the pack. And, and he, he was, was by himself. The... And I don't know. Let's see how he got involved. I, I think he was just trying to avoid the wreck. Because you could see there's a bunch of smoke and a bunch of cars. Basically, trying to hope and pray to get through. And he tried the old going down low trick, and unfortunately, it does not work out in his favor. And he runs right into the 21 right there. Actually, caught some air right there. Yeah, into the 21 of Pichu London, who was one of the wild card drivers going into the race tonight. But man, just complete and utter mayhem. I don't think we've had a wreck this big in quite a while. This was a massive crash that took out pretty much more than half the field. Yeah, and see, I was amazed how they went five wide and made it work, but six wide to actually see that for at least a brief moment of time, that's impressive that these guys did it. But if you look very carefully, there's about probably less than ten cars that made it through that wreck. I mean, that's unbelievable. Yeah, and there's probably more, but we'll figure that out when we get back to racing. But, uh, yeah, and speaking of that, we're going to go ahead. Well, actually, we're going to take a couple of onboards. Uh, here in just a moment. On board with William Brock as all this unfolds. Gets loose. Man. And look at all the wrecking behind him. Whoa, right behind him was a flipping car. That's, that's pretty crazy to see that, though. On board with Matt McIntyre. Yeah, he just got clipped, and there you see all of it unfold. Wow. Chris Michaels slipped in right in front of him, and I think he really got away with getting very minimal damage right there. That's that's something you really don't get to say a lot, but I think he got away with very minimal damage. Yeah, I mean, who knows if he'll be up to speed or not is the big question. And finally, on board with P.J. Williams, and he's going to have an interesting view of this. He just about avoided everything from that wreck. Except for that 20 and the 12 right there. Upgrade. One final on board with Tim Walsh, and watch how he gets through. Wow. Wow. I don't believe it. I didn't think there was one person that made it through. Unfortunately, he did. That's amazing. Well, after that massive crash, we got not as many cars as I thought would be done for today, but we got quite a lot that are out of the race, and they include Trent Dunham, Phil Parker, Peachy London, Chris Michaels, Dylan Poteet, Dylan Young, Dorian Facepuncher, Jessica Shelton, David Rivera, PJ Williams, Emmanuel Hartnett, Zach Flickinger, Johnny Gardner, Sean Galligan, and Chris Dollerton. 
So we're down to 27 cars on track, 24 on the lead lap. Andrew Rich is still your race leader. Second is DJ Curtis. Third is Matt Haas. Fourth is Jake Baskinger. Fifth, Austin LaPlan. Sixth, Dylan Jacobs. Seventh, Anthony McCrory. Eighth, Paul Menick. Ninth, Benjamin Miles. Tenth, Tim Walsh. And then somehow in 11th is Rafael Duke, though I fully expect he's going to drop to the back. 12th yeah. is James McLeod. 13th, Zachary Fitzwater. 14th, Seth Cole. 15th, Preston Blord. 16th, Dylan Thoreau. 17th, Joshua Sakuli. 18th, Mark Lane. 19th, Matt McIntyre. 20th, Carson Gum. 21st, Kyle Keith. 22nd, Joshua Collard. 23rd, Tim Fiegel. And then 24th is James Qualls. And then three cars a lap or more down. William Brock, Jonathan Zorlin, and Charles Sanford. Yeah, I feel like with that 99 where he's at, he probably could hold up a good number of drivers there. That's not a good sign right there. No, indeed it is not. And also with these three on the bottom lane, if people are going to go to the bottom, they're going to get held up by these cars. Unless uh, the 88, I feel like the 88 may be up to speed because I don't really see any damage on this car. Maybe he got stuck on pit road. I don't know. We'll find out. But we are getting ready to get back to racing here, and it will be 22 to go here at the line. Still a long way to go. Back a green flag out. I'll tell you what, the 56 got a nice start right there. I'm amazed how the 01 and the 88, they're actually going really well up to speed, though, but not really losing the pack. Indeed, that is uh, rather interesting, but it looks like the 03 of Sanford was the one out of those three to be off the pace. Because he did get big time damage, and I think he's actually slower than the 99, which is weird. Yeah, and I, I kind of wasn't surprised by seeing this, though. You could tell how many cars he's holding up right now, and, you know, it really does not surprise me. Same zero three Charles Sanford. Yeah, and also some of these cars back here are off the pace too, like the forty one slightly off, the nineteen slightly off, and even the eight is slightly off, so we'll see how all that plays out as we got a new leader, DJ Curtis, at the line. Yeah, Curtis got a good run right there. Here comes the fifty five going three wide with the eighteen and forty eight. Yeah, Benjamin Miles in the 55 for Michael Waltrip Racing, teammates to Andrew Rich. Their only teammate that didn't qualify in was Charles Jackson in the double zero. Didn't make it in via knockout qualifying. But both of his teammates, Miles and Rich, are doing him proud by running up here in the top five right now. Yeah, that 18's getting a good run for that third position, though. And I'll tell you what, the 18's got a nice look, a little throwback look to the days of Bobby Labonte on a Toyota, though. He's having a not bad run, though. Yeah, Jake Baskinger, who's the only driver, actually, as I remember, he's the only driver this season to have not gotten a top 10 finish. That's unbelievable. Right now, he's in a good spot to do that. But, however, there's plenty of time, so it's it can still happen. So it looks like, for the most part, pretty much it's the top ten that are racing up here. And then you got Zorlin, who's sort of like the middleman between the main pack and then everyone else behind him who are close, but no cigar right now. Like Fitzwater and Preston Plourd, who are 11th and 12th right now. And then as a result yeah. of being held up, a lot of other cars fall into the back. Yeah, but the problem I see, though, is that if, if I don't think a caution's going to come out, basically going to be a good run of pit stops and just hope that you have the better pit stop. I mean, if, if there was a caution, maybe, but I just don't see it. Yeah, it all depends on how racy these guys will be up here at the front, and it's looking like the 40's starting to catch back up to the pack a little bit, so he's going to have a chance to try and race it up with the leaders to make it an 11 car... Actually, it might be a bigger pack, and I'm just not realizing it. In fact, I think it is a bigger pack now. So now it's a 12, roughly 12 car pack up here at the front of the field, and we got a challenge for the lead. Here comes James McLeod in the 51, but with no drafting help. 
Yeah, that 51, he's still getting a good run of a cloud. But I also see McCurry, he's coming along. It could help him out. McCurry getting a nice run, going up to the bumper of James McLeod, and he's definitely going to get that second position, unless McCurry tries to look underneath three wide. You can tell McCurry, he's wanting to do that. Yeah, and Austin LaPlante, who's in his uh, farewell season, as he will not be returning next season, and will actually, like I've said before, will be replaced by rookie Alex Ferranti, who's not a rookie in the channel. He's raced in the Walmart Cup Series, but for this series... He will be a rookie next season, and probably the biggest rookie class I possibly have ever had on this channel. 20 rookies, and while I'm on the subject of the rookies, I was talking about this to uh, Dylan before we started recording, and that is next season and season 4, because of the amount of rookies, 20 out of 60 drivers next season are going to be rookies. So basically, the knockout qualifying format will be changed the next season into three different groups because there will be ten established drivers who will have to qualify their way into the first five races next season. So basically how it's going to work, it's going to be three groups. Group A, Group B, Group C. Group A will be the established drivers. And keep this in mind, when it comes to top 30 and points situations... Oh, one car in the wall there. That's the 18. I'm sorry for interrupting you, but the 18 got himself into the wall, and that's really going to kill his momentum right there. Yeah, Baskinger got the wall trying to give room, but anyways, I like I was... I think he's going to lose the draft, too, which is going to be a killer right there, so that's not good for Baskinger. That is not good at all. <clears throat> but returning to uh, my statement, as I see LaPlante going for the lead now, uh, but yeah, so Group A is the established drivers for next season that have to qualify their way in. As I see Dylan Jacobs pulling into pit road, green flag pit stops might be underway here in just a moment. Um, but yeah, Group A will be the established drivers who have to qualify their way into the first five races. After the first five races, depending on who falls out, that will be how the qualifying sessions for knockout qualifying in Group A will turn out. Now, Groups B and C will be the two different rookie groups. Now, here's going to be the big twist. All rookies have to qualify their way in every single race. So, it's going to make it very interesting to see who can make races and win Rookie of the Year next season. So... Knockout qualifying is going to be very important next season. There's more cars more pit going up pit road. You see McLeod going for the lead there. There's a good number of cars coming on down pit road. Leading them down is Anthony McCurry. As we got, we were three wide for the lead. And DJ Curtis has just been using that outside lane to his advantage. But here comes McLeod and LaPlante underneath. And Andrew Rich trying to help the 14 keep that spot. As Matt Haas is lurking behind. Last turn, do what he can there. He has up the Sanford Dylan Jacobs, but I don't think it's really going to be an issue. As drivers are leaving pit road. Oh, in oh, contact, contact with Carson Gum and Anthony McCrory, but McCrory's still going to beat out Tim Walsh out of pit road despite that. Yeah, I don't think that damage is really going to affect Anthony McCrory at all, but let's see if the other drivers are going to come on down pit road. As I'm uh, trying to look around to find where everyone else is. I think they did come down. Oh, one of them did at least. Two of them. Yeah, the 56 and the 48 stay out an extra lap. And yeah, I think they're the only ones who have yet to come in the pit road. Andrew Rich and Austin LaPlante yet to come in the pit road. Well, I don't know if they're going to come on the pit this time, especially the fact how there's traffic all over the place, and wow, that 56 really had to get off the throttle there. LaPlante trying to go with the faster way to get around him, and I don't know if it's going to work out for LaPlante, but I know Andrew Ridge, yeah, he's coming on down. LaPlante, I think he wanted to join him, but he lost out on that. Yeah, so we're going to have to stay here on the 48 and see if he's... Oh, and he's out of gas! Yep, I, I figured... And oh man, he had, and he just got past the line... So if he ends up running out to the point where he can't go, the NNSRA may bring out the caution. And we had this happen before 
a few weeks ago. I think it was with DJ Curtis, if I remember. I think it was Pocono a couple weeks ago where a couple cars were running out of gas and because they couldn't make it back to pit road in time and NSCRA threw out the caution. So if LaPlante can't get to pit road in time, which it's not looking likely because he's dropping now down to about 70 miles an hour, and yeah, NSCRA he, he, may bring the caution out. Yeah, I just don't see him getting it. Well, I mean, the good news for LaPlante, he led a lap of the bad news is he takes the risk of um, not winning the race, but also running out of gas on the, on the track. That's a tough break for LaPlante. Yeah. Yeah, I knew... Rich was smart there. He he waited behind the cars. LaPlante thought he could outrun them on the high line, and normally that's not what you want to do in a super speedway there. And it looks like I think that's going to be a, um, a valve of the lead coming up very soon. Yep, there it is. There's 56-61. So there's your new leader, Anthony McCurry. But we are staying on the 48 of Austin LaPlante to see if he's going to be able to coast it back to pit road in time. And he's getting close, but he's slowing down now to 45 miles an hour. I don't know. It, 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 like I said, it is going to be interesting to see if a caution's going to come out if he ends up running out before he even gets to pit road. He is getting close. But I don't know. I mean, he's now down to 34 miles an hour, 33 now. It looks like he may get in there in time before NSRA could bring out a caution. At least I'm trying to figure out. Yeah, we are still clean and green, and LaPlante is entering pit road now. But can he get into his pit stall in time before he ends up getting teleported and potentially forced to put his car over the wall, which is what happened back at Pocono with a couple of cars. It's down to 23 miles an hour, and it looks like he might get into his pit stall, because his pit stall seems to be in one of the first ones you see coming in, and it looks like he's going to get in. So, tough break for LaPlante, but he does get to pit road before uh, anything could happen, and the caution's still not out, and we're still clean and green, and LaPlante takes two tires and gas and is going to... Uh, get back out there but uh back up to the battle for the lead as dylan young had to step out of the booth uh for something but uh we have a new leader and that is the uh 77 of matt haas who's right now ahead of dj curtis and it's only these two fighting up here for the spot and then it's a uh, one second back to anthony mccrory and tim walsh who are third and fourth and there's LaPlante coming out of pit road, but he is uh, a lap down now as a result. So I'm trying to look for everyone else who are on everyone else who's on the lead lap, and they're all in this little group of cars, and we are less than ten to go. If these guys, these six cars, Minnick, Miles, McLeod, Jacobs, Plord, and Rich, if they can all work together, they could potentially catch up to the leaders, especially now that they've caught a slow car of Matt McIntyre. And they may have to deal with more slow cars here very soon. But uh, it did look like that group of six did uh, gain a little bit on the leaders. I think they gained less than a second. So, like I said, if they can all work together, which they seem seemingly are doing right now, if they can work together and also get around the 24 relatively all right, then they'll be able to get up to the leaders and make this uh, pack big again to fight for the win. But up here at the front, DJ Curtis has retaken the lead from the 77, but the 61 and the 15 have caught the top two so this is right now a four car fight for the lead and potentially the win but you got to consider because the 78 was the first one to come into pit road on lap 14 it's also a big uh, question of how much or how many laps can they go on fuel before they have to come into pit road because a lot of different drivers had different strategies but yeah you can tell that big pack is definitely catching the leaders as they actually gained more than a second that time. 
but they are starting to get stagnated a little bit, and Andrew Rich is especially starting to lose that pack, and he's slower than the 78, so the 56 may be the odd man out <coughs> right now, unless the 40 can slow down a little bit to catch the 78, and then the, they slow down just a tad to give the 56 a little shot. And actually, they ended up losing a little bit of time to the top four, but they are catching two more slower cars, the 43 and the 8. Depending on what they're going to do, it looks like they're going to go by on the bottom, so right now, no problems. But now the 61 got held up a bit, but now he gets back down low. But the 61's coming into pit road, so that's a sign that they will have to pit one more time before the race is over. It's back up here at the front, the 77 leads. Trying to look at the margin between 4th and 5th. Or, f yeah, 3rd uh, and 4th. And it's less than 2 seconds, but now this pack's getting held up by the aid of Tim Fiegel, so that's going to really mess their momentum up. That might have just uh, shut the door on any chance or hope of these guys catching the leaders. They are in the same frame, though, as the leaders, but because of the slow cars and also the stagnance uh, of some of the cars, they ended up getting slowed up. And now the 14 and the 15 are in pit road, so DJ Curtis and Tim Walsh sacrificed the first and second just to go in the pit road and taking bringing the lead back over to Matt Haas with four to go here at Armory Digital. Apologize for that uh, freeze and apologize for it again. Since uh, Dylan Young had to step out of the booth, I had to close my Discord and stuff. But Matt Haas comes in the pit road, and here comes more. Andrew Rich going to stay out, and he was one of the ones that stayed out the longest, along with the uh, 48 of Austin LaPlante. But the 56 pitted at the right moment, and it's now three to go. Will the 56 be able to stretch it out the rest of the way in hopes of getting that win? I don't know. It's... It's questionable, but if he can do it, I'll be impressed. Austin LaPlante going to stay out as well, but he's two laps down. After everything that occurred uh, earlier on when he ran out of gas under green. But let's see if the 56 is going to stay out another lap. It looks like he is. The 56 is going to try to go for the ultimate risk. And try and stay out just to get that W. Two laps to go now here at Armory Digital for the Marvel Studios 500. And he is approaching a slower car, the 24 of Matt McIntyre, which... Uh, I figured if he would have stayed behind him, he could have let off the gas a little bit and save a little bit of gas in case he's trying to stay out until the very end of the race. As we're going to stay on the uh, miles per hour rating to see if when he could run out of gas if he decides to stay out another lap. And he is going to stay out another lap. Oh man, this is going to get very interesting. As he has a gigantic lead over right now it looks like the 77 of Matt Haas as the white flag is out here at Armory Digital and Andrew Rich trying to go for the ultimate risk and stay out for the rest of the way in hopes of getting the win. Right now he's up to speed. He's still going 190 plus. And I got a feeling if he does run out, he can just coast till he gets to the line now at this point because he's got a gigantic lead over to 77. Right now he's still up to speed. 
And it looks like, yeah, he's going to officially get this win from the ultimate fuel strategy. And pretty much if he runs out, he's going to be able to coast it as the checkered flag is waving. First win of the season, I think. Andrew Rich wins the Marvel Studios 500 here at Armory Digital Super Speedway after pulling off one of the most impressive fuel mileage wins I think I have ever seen in the history of this YouTube channel. Wow. That was incredible on the 56. Picked up a huge win by staying out and was able to have enough gas to keep going. And, and I'm trying to see and I think... I can't tell if he's out of gas or if he's just slowing down. I think he's just slowing down. So he had plenty of gas, it seemed, to keep going throughout the rest of the race. So that was impressive on the part of 56. But let's look at the uh, um, at the rest of the results now that things are starting to finish up with everyone else who was so far back that they needed to go an extra lap just to finish. Uh, it looks like Matt Haas is going to come through with a second place finish. Uh, D and uh, DJ Curtis with a great run in third. Tim Walsh comes through in a solid fourth place run. And then Paul Minnick with a fifth place finish. Anthony McCurry with a great run in sixth. James McLeod finishing out in seventh. Uh, Preston Plord with a great run in eighth. Dylan Jacobs finishing out ninth. And Jake Baskinger finally gets that top ten. And finishes in the 10th position. And then the rest of the lead lap cars were key, uh, Kyle Keith, Benjamin Miles, Zachary Fitzwater, Seth Cole. Everyone else would, that finished were a lap or more down. And they were Dylan Thoreau, Carson Gum, Joshua Schooley, James Qualls, Mark Lane, Joshua Collard, Tim Fiegel, Matt McIntyre, Jonathan Zorlin, Austin LaPlante, Raphael LaDuke, William Brock, and Charles Sanford. Everyone else was out of the race after the massive crash that happened early on in the race, and they were Trent Dunham, Phil Parker, Pichu London, Chris Michaels, Dylan Poteet, Dylan Young, Dorian Facepuncher, Jessica Sheldon, David Rivera, PJ Williams, Emmanuel Hartnett, uh, Zach Flickinger, Johnny Gardner, Sean Galligan, and Chris Dollarton. Well, that does it for our coverage here today at Armory Digital Super Speedway for the Marvel Studios 500. Next week, we head back to road course racing at Watkins Glen International for the Cheez-It 220. But until then, here are your results, rookie points, and regular points heading into Watkins Glen. And this is Levi McIntyre, signing off. <laughs>